Okay, I think it's time to explain the Linux root user. So on Linux systems, I'm logged in right here, um, there are multiple users. And I'm logged in as Alice right now. You can see my prompt right here says Alice. It's Alice at server. So the host name, this is my location. Now, if I were to type in uh, ID and my username, Alice, I could see some information about Alice. Alice's UID 1000 with a GID 1000 and part of the group's Alice. So the UID is the user ID, the group ID, and then which groups that Alice is part of. However, that is not the same thing as the root user. Also, when we're looking at this, you can see that there is this dollar sign right here at my prompt. The dollar sign indicates that I am a normal user. Now you can change this to be something else if you wanted, but normally if you see a dollar sign as your prompt, that indicates you are a regular user and you do not have root access. So how do you switch to becoming root? Or who is root? What is root? If I type in id root, I can see that the root user has a UID of zero, a GID of zero, and they're a member of the group root. So the UID zero and a GID of zero basically gives you full access to do almost anything you want. You have permissions to change other people's permissions, change directories, all kinds of things. Now then the question is how do you get into that group or how do you get in that user? How do you become the root user? You have the option of logging in as the root user and that will get you there. You can also switch over to root. So you can do su dash. Su dash will switch over to the root user and then the dash will give you the root user's environment. So it puts you in the root user's path, give you the root, I mean the root user's path and put you in the root user's home directory. So I type in this, it will then prompt me for the root user's password. So if I know it, I can type it in and I can switch over to the root user. The other method you can use is you can use the sudo command. Now, let's take a look at that. In the etc directory, there's a file called sudoers. So let's do a nano on that file. sudoers file right here in this etc directory. So I can also put this uh, slash etc right here. Either way, I get in the file and you scroll down and it has information about who can run commands as root. So the root user can run commands as root, but it says people in the group wheel can also run commands as root. So the wheel group. All right, so what is the wheel group? Let's take a look at that. If we look at the wheel group, you can see it in the group file. So if I do a grep on wheel in the etc group file, I can see there's this wheel group and it shows me there are no users in the group. All right, so I can modify the Alice user so that Alice could be part of that group. So if I do a um, user mod minus G with a capital G wheel, Alice, then Alice then gets added to the group. I can do an ID Alice. I can see that Alice is now part of the group. She is still UID 1000, GID 1000, but she's part of the Alice group and the wheel group. Now, if I look at that file again, the group file, I can see that now Alice has been listed. This list right here is a list of usernames, comma, separated. So you can add multiple people there. What that means is that Alice, once she logs in again with a new, completely new, fresh environment, will have access to run commands as root. So let's go ahead and exit out of this root thing. I'm back in Alice. Now, Alice does not have the correct environment currently in order to run as the field group. <clears throat> so I'm going to um, exit again and re log in again as the Alice user. And well, let's go ahead and load that. And 
here's my terminal again. And push it out. Let's see that. And type in her password. And now I have an ID Alice. And I can see that she is listed as being a member of the wheel group. Now Alice can run commands as root. So if I do L, I do an ls minus al the root directory. This will not work because she is not root. Let's say person denied. However, I can now run in front of that an sudo sudo or sudo, and then run this command, and it'll prompt me for Alice's password. She types in the password, and then it runs the command, and you can see the files in the root directory. So she can now run commands as root using this command. If she wanted to, she can even do cat out the etc pssd file. Actually, that one's easy to do. Um, shadow. This is where all the passwords are stored. As long as she has the sudo command in front, she can see all the encrypted passwords. And she can see her passwords, encryption codes, and everything like there. So she can try hacking her account. But if she does it without the sudo command, it still says permission denied. So sudo allows her to run commands as root. If she wants to switch a root, she can do su minus, type in the root password if she knows it. However, if she does not know the root password, because she has the sudo command, she can type in sudo sudo su dash, and then it will prompt her for her password, and then root will be running this su command, which gives her access, and then she can run commands as root. You'll notice that once she is in as root, the prompt changes, so it's no longer the dollar sign, it is the hash mark. So if you have the hash mark, that's what allows you to run, well, it's not the hash mark, but being in as root allows you to run commands. You can also type in who am I, and that will tell you who you're at who you're currently logged in as. You can also see right here in the prompt that this person is logged in as root. This is displaying. And if she exits out and types in who am I, once again, she's Alice again. And that's basically what the root user, a little bit about the root user.